Welcome to the Conquering Chaos Podcast, where we talk about God and practical ways to grow as a Christian. I'm Andre Reynica, and today we'll be talking with Josh Carson about sports broadcasting, living intentionally, and his faith. Let's get started. Before the time has come, we stay in this champion. There's a king on the inside. Pull back your shoulders. Today on the show, we're excited to have Josh Carson, a friend, a believer who is currently working as an audiovisual lighting associate at Illuminate Production Services. Josh is an avid sports fan has, and has history in sports broadcasting. He created the Eye of the Tiger Sports Network at his high school and called play-by-play for basketball and football live streams. He continued this during his collegiate years by being a sports broadcaster and reporter for Jessup Athletics. Josh has also built a very successful YouTube channel from scratch that has amassed over 40,000 subscribers and 17 million views since its creation in 2012. Josh and I sem- uh, share a similar passion and love for the game of basketball and its culture. His YouTube channel primarily focuses on basketball and sneakers. Today, he is going to share his story, his expertise on how to use your passion and career to serve God, and some advice on how to find your calling and excel at what you do. Josh, welcome to the Concrete and Chaos Podcast. How's it going, man? I am good. You know, Andre, it is so great to be here with you. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to be here at the beginning of this podcast because I see great things in the trajectory for this. And to know that I was there at the start, I'll always be able to claim that. So, yeah, good to know that and glad to be here. Yeah. Cool. All right, Josh. So first question, uh, did you have a dream growing up? Like, did you have a dream job you wanted to kind of, you know, looked up to? Or- yeah, uh, great opening question. And, you know, but for both of us, I imagine and for every young kid who plays sports, they wanted to be a professional at that sport, right? So we we both, uh, you know, love to play the game of basketball and we, we still do. We love to play, watch the game, study the game. So, uh, you know, obviously I wanted to be an NBA player. Then I realized it's probably not going to happen. You know, <laughs> that's that's a pretty uh, exclusive class. And so uh, when I realized that wasn't that wasn't in the cards, like many other young kids do, I decided to move on to really focus on the the broadcasting reporting side of uh, sports. And so uh, I did that, like you mentioned in the intro, uh, all throughout high school and in college. And uh, my, my YouTube channel, actually, if I want to rewind a little bit, started before then uh, in middle school. And I was in seventh grade when I started that channel. And so uh, I kept it going to this day and uh, 22 years old now. And so that, that's been going for a good amount of time. And so since 2012, we're almost at the 10 year mark for that. And so, yeah, that's that's. uh, So I said, hey, even if I can't make it as a player, uh, let me see if I can cover sports and and broadcast and report and and do that at a high level. So that's what I focused on. Yeah, man, that's awesome. So you feel like God called you to to the sports world specifically. And do you feel like that's kind of the calling that he has for you growing up or that you realized recently? Uh, Well, uh, a little more recently. Right. So. You mentioned that uh, I'm currently a, an audiovisual lighting uh, technician associate at uh, Illuminate Production Services, a local production company, great company. But recently, and, and this is probably going to be news to you as well, I uh, accepted a position at Max Preps. I'm sure you heard of Max Preps. Yeah, so I p- accepted a position for them. Uh, they're going to allow me to uh, be a video editor and a content uh, producer over there. And essentially, I mean, one of the main things that they were they were asking about is how can we grow a YouTube channel? I said, well, I got some experience with that. And are you passionate about working in a team and storytelling through video? And those are the main things that I'm passionate about. I believe that God has put that within me. And uh, storytelling through video is something that it can be done in sports through feature pieces, you know, looking at athletes, uh, you know, not only their work ethic and what they do on the court field, whatever the, the arena of play is, but also... Uh, you know, just in their personal lives as well. And so that's something that I'm really looking forward to to getting to do in this next upcoming position for me. It's really like my first uh, real like full time uh, position out of college. I was working a lot at, at to the production services company, learned a lot of great things there, but that was still a part time position. So this is uh, and and to say as well, it feels good to know that uh, Max Preps, you know, they're a startup in 2006 is a bit of a side note, but they started up in the local uh, area here in El Dorado Hills. And, uh, you know, they eventually expanded their national company and their CBS Sports affiliate. So I'm technically under the CBS Sports branch. 
um, as a worker for them, which is just absolutely incredible. Uh, the Lord has done uh, amazing things opening that up. Um, but yeah, that's a passion of mine that the Lord has has blessed um, as I've suited it and, and uh, really worked toward it for a lot of my life. And um, I believe this is a great start to what can be um, a career in it. And yeah, I definitely believe that the Lord is in it. And I believe that, uh, you know, you have some questions in here too, talking about calling and talking about passion and that can those things be combined? And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get into that more when, once we hit that part. But yeah, I definitely believe that the, the Lord is in it and what he's done to orchestrate this has been, um, it, I've seen his hand in it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And just a, you know, a question that popped to mind is, you know, a lot of the times we, we might be in seasons of life where we don't necessarily know the purpose of what we're doing or what we're going through. And I just want to ask, you know, that during your time at Illuminate, do you feel now, you might have not realized it in the moment, but do you feel now that God was kind of preparing you for this opportunity that was going to come up um, in any type of way? A hundred percent. No doubt about it. I believe I've included this in a further answer, but I'll talk a little bit about it now. And I want to reference something that, uh, you know, you and I have been attending Destiny Young Adults, right? And there's, there's Pastor Matt Porter. And something that he mentioned to me is that the Lord doesn't always just drop you in the promised land right when you want it. And that's not something you want to hear when you don't, you're not in the promised land, right? When you're not quite there yet. And not to say that any job is the quote unquote promised land, because there's always going to be stuff in every job that you're just going to have to work through. But, uh, you know, more of your line of interest of, of work, right? Something that you would work toward in a career, that type of job. And so, yes, the Lord doesn't always do that. But as I look back and I see my time in Illuminate and even, you know, when I graduated college, from the time that I graduated college until now, I absolutely needed the, the experiences that I got and just to be patient as well. And it's good to, to, on a very practical note, diversify your skill set, right? I was doing a lot with sports, but um, getting to do other jobs, like I've worked jobs in, in retail before. I've worked at a gym you know, I've done video work at, uh, at Illuminate and that, even though that at Illuminate wasn't directly sports related, it has given me knowledge that, I mean, the, some of the things you're asking me about in the interview was video related. And I could say, yeah, I actually just learned that on my job. And so it's, it's, it's funny, the Lord's sense of humor. Another thing uh, that I'll mention as well, one of my first jobs with Illuminate was covering uh, the Honor Bowl, and uh, it's a big high school football tournament that uh, uh, it's like a two day thing uh, that happens two separate weekends. There's a SoCal and there's a NorCal version of it, and uh, it's put together uh, by this former uh, Granite Bay High coach. And he um, he's basically just showing and explaining to these kids uh, the importance and value of our military and sharing stories, personal stories about the military. And uh, it was uh, that I mean, for that reason alone, it was great. The talent level out there was great. And that was actually one of my first jobs at Illuminate that I got to do. And I got to shoot uh, video, they call it B-roll footage for of the games, right? And so that was huge in this interview because, you know, Max, perhaps one of the one of the events that they cover is the Honorable. So yeah, it was big. And it's funny how way back, you know, that was in, I don't know, September last year, right? And the Lord is using it now, you know, when I interviewed. So you know, everything has a purpose and it's hard to see in the moment at times, uh, but that's an assurance to anybody out there who's wondering, man, what am I doing with this? I'd, in, I'd encourage you and say, hey, you know, keep the end goal in mind always. Don't let that fade. And, and you know, uh, if you can work toward that, whether that's, you know, applying for jobs or just increasing your skill set, do it. But also know that whatever you're doing, even if it's not directly related to what you're passionate about or what you hope to do someday, it's going to help you in some way. I mean, I can already say how retail helped me just with people skills, right? I can already say how the gym helped me with understanding like, you know, athletes and working out how all that works, right? Playing sports, obviously, this is everything that you do. If you're committing it to the Lord and you're honoring God with it, he's going to use it in some way in your future. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It makes me think of a couple of different things. You know, the one big thing that comes to mind is the idea that God has so much more like in plan for us and store for us than we can even begin to imagine. You know, we can see that in multiple different places and throughout the Bible, you know, and so I think that's huge. And like you said, at the end of the day, we may not see the purpose, but he has a purpose, you know, even for our, our weakest times or the times where we're the lowest, like he uses perseverance and trials and tribulations to prepare us so that when we are in those states uh, or when we get the opportunities, 
will one recognize them you know will actually see the opportunities for what they are and then appreciate them and actually use them you know that's we can see that in many many different references throughout the bible but yeah I mean, that's that's really cool that's really really cool you know it's it's definitely true to what you were saying about diversification too and more than just a spiritual aspect and seeing what the way god has these different elements in everyone's plan but more just in the real world too in a practical way like you said like you get to see the perspective of the, of the guy that's going to the gym having two days five days a week you know and he's working his butt off to try to get better especially in the sports world you know so yeah man that's that's really cool it's really huge Okay, so um, back to kind of, you know, to where we started with this whole thing. Like you said, you were able to kind of provide your experience with YouTube and to kind of show that you were able to build this really cool channel, man. So um, I just wanted to say back to when you actually started it, like how did you decide to start the channel? The channel is called JC3, right? Yeah, the channel is uh, my full name, Josh Carson, JC3 at the end. And so, um, yeah, how did I decide to start it? I actually started it as a, as a kind of a gaming channel, which is funny because I'm not a gamer anymore. I don't find the time. <laughs> I don't find the time, but you know, it's just part of growing up, I guess. But uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I just would commentate like over NBA 2K, right? I'd play, I'd play my career or my team, whatever the mode was. And I'd just commentate over that. And then eventually I was able to move on to uh, commentating over like real basketball footage and uh, partnership with uh, Broadband TV, NBA Playmakers. They manage the NBA's YouTube channel. Came along the way, and um, I was able to uh, license content directly from NBA games and get it all legally to avoid copyright and everything. So that led to cool opportunities as well. Uh, entered a playoff video contest once. It was 2019. Won that. Got to go to the summer league in Vegas. Um, and so, like, there was cool uh, opportunities that that came along with it. And you know, my goal. And, um, you know, this is this is some advice, per se, encouragement to all up and coming, uh, just just young people like really saying, hey, this is a goal that I eventually have what I want to work to. What could I do now? Right. So in seventh grade, obviously, I'm not going to go get a full time job. But what I could say is, hey, I'm going to start doing something that I'm passionate about and build a portfolio of work. And that was always my goal with YouTube. And so I made sure at the end, like, let's keep it professional. Let's do work that's intriguing. And let's try to, try to you know, I'm going to make it my own thing and personalize it. But we're going to look at what's out there. I'm going to say, hey, I can create that just like this company, just like this company. I'm going to do that piece of content, this piece of content. I'm going to do my research. Um, and so you could create a portfolio of work for yourself. And I can say in this job, at least, that I've interviewed for and now that, uh, I've officially agreed to, to come on to in Max Preps. It was a huge part of my interviewing process just to be able to say, like, look, if I was able to do this on my own, obviously with, with the help of the Lord, right? I was, I was able to do this on my own. Like, what more can I do in a company with a team of people? So you can always be furthering uh, your skill set and, and create a body of work. An example, I think a great, another practical thing. Everybody should have their own like Adobe portfolio website or some type of portfolio website just showcasing what you've done. If you know you have a goal in mind, it's as specific or non-specific as that may be, just start making making stuff, you know? Like that's what I did in school. Instead of uh, and, and this is, you know, it's not the case for everybody. Everybody knows how they have to balance their life. But like when I was young, instead of going and getting a girlfriend, which I know that wouldn't last for that long because it usually doesn't last that long at that age, I would like make videos or I'd go like, you know, actually play basketball or something like, so I always had that goal in mind. And then as life goes on, as you mature, you find how to, you know, balance stuff more and, you know, that, that all falls in line, but yeah, and you put, you commit it to the Lord first with Matthew six thirty three. what does it say? Right. Seek first the kingdom of God. All these things will be added unto you as well. He's given you those desires. If you're a follower of Christ and you know it and you're saved, right? He's given you those desires within you. Go pursue those things today. There's, there's no time to waste. He's put you on this earth for a specific period of time. And um, obviously, you know, praise God, we'll live eternally with him. But we only have so much time here. So every day, you know, make those steps toward what he's calling you to do, what you feel like he's giving you the passions to do. And if that's something that you can turn into a career, great, do it. Okay, just to follow up real quick, you know, from your YouTube career and your experiences in YouTube, what are some of like the major lessons that you learned, you know, from your success and maybe your failures as well during that whole process? Um, 
successes and failures from YouTube. Well, especially on a on a platform like YouTube, there is I don't know what the specific stat is, but there are so you know x amount of hours of content uploaded every minute, right? So you have to find a way, uh, the best way possible, to stand out on there if you want to get your content discovered. I think the unfortunate downside to YouTube is because it is such a popular platform and there's so much content being uploaded, somebody could produce really good content. Like there could be really, really good content that completely goes undiscovered. The things that you can do from a from an algorithm perspective, it's always changing. But what you could do is, uh, you know, focus on what you're titling your videos as. And, and what your thumbnail looks like. I mean, those are the first two things that people see. They see that little thumbnail picture and they see the title. And so you look up popular search terms like, you know, just if you were going to find anything else, what are people searching for? Does my content relate to that in any way? If it does, include that in your title, right? There are very few creators on there who can just get away with not following that rule. You know, they, they are not the norm, they're the exception. And it's okay if you're not a part of the exception. You can grind and get your content up just on your own without marketing dollars and anything else that these bigger creators might use. And so, yeah, I mean, those are the, the positives. Yeah, I mean, I've had some videos do really well. And I think the, the thing at the end of the day, you got to go into it knowing that uh, it probably at first won't be a huge moneymaker. And it's, I mean, even at the point that I'm at, it's not something that, um, I could run like a career off of. And so that's a thing, but, you know, have a goal in mind for it and be, be content with the, the content that you're putting out, regardless of the number. I mean, there's been plenty of videos that put out there. I said, you know, I think this should have done better. Like I really believe it should have. Um, but I enjoyed the process of making it. I enjoyed, if you're enjoying what you're doing and, um, you know, you, you know what your overall goal is for the content that you're posting, then, then it's good. And something too, that I want to mention how I've been able to bring, uh, the Lord into the content, right? So you might think, Hey, you post basketball content, it's sports content, but the thing is there's eyes on this content. And so I'd say, regardless of whatever the amount of views was, what I can do every video, and if it could just help one person, you mentioned that on the first episode of this podcast, it just helps one person. If I could just help one person, what do I want to do? So I said, okay, you know, I'm going to put a verse in the comment, in the comment section of every video, and I'm going to put that verse at the top of the comment section. And you wouldn't believe, dude, like some of these videos, people have been like, thank you so much for posting that verse. I really needed that today. And they, they think they're coming to get a basketball video, but they come and they see the comments and they could get something more than that. So that to me is what it's really all about at the end of the day. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter like how many likes that comments gets or replies. What matters is like, dude, somebody could have seen it and not said anything, but it could have had an effect on them. Some of them even said, hey, this is convicting for me. Like I need to, I need to check myself, <laughs> right? Like this is, so that's the good thing, man. Like, the Lord can work through what you're doing if you submit it to him. And then I'd say this too, if you make any money from it that you tithe or give authoring, offering, I've never heard one person in my life ever say, man, I wish I didn't tithe. You never hear that. You never hear that, right? God can do so much more with a, with a small percentage of money that you can give out of your total paycheck uh, than you could ever do with that percentage on your own. And so that's another thing. And so, yeah, man, everything, everything in life is either, it's either time or money, right? So dedicate them both to the Lord and uh, he'll be with you for sure. Absolutely, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, that leads us right into the next question, actually. You kind of covered it already is, uh, you know, how you used your success to, to minister. You know, that's, that's awesome. I know we talked about it recent, kind of recently about the whole idea of, you know, you don't have to be a pastor, but you could still, you know, serve and, and further the kingdom of God. And so, yeah, man. And so just just on that topic specifically, like you said, like it's the little things that they might not be coming for God, but they might receive God in an indirect way. So that's really cool, man. I think a big part of that, too, is intentions. Like uh, like it's something you love. It's something that God put on your heart. And through that process, you know, you're putting it out almost in God's name, even though it may not be a, you know, direct 
sermon or you know whatever it is like you put it out in god's name and and when you as a as a christian when you put your stuff out there yes sure, it's in your name but you are you know a child of god and so you're representing him can i say this too like you know we've we've in society kind of drawn a line between the sacred and the secular right uh but my my challenge to that would simply be why uh, there's a verse that says the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. If that's the case, why as Christians are we excluding or, or look at some industries and say, well, Christ must be excluded from that. Now, it's very fair to look at maybe the school system, maybe look especially at government and say, man, God has been excluded from that. And, you know, I think it's fair to say that. But at the same time, if God's called you to go there, he's put a passion on your heart, you know, longing on your heart to work in one of those industries, bring Christ to that industry because God knows they need it, right? And so uh, the challenge would be, let's not look at societies like that's where Christ belongs. This, is, this isn't. Why? Why not? He owns it. He owns it all. He owns everything. And whatever the enemy is doing out here, the enemy is on a very, very uh, small, or I should say short leash, Right. There's nothing he's doing that the Lord is not surprised about, all right? Lord knows everything. He's omniscient, omnipresent, and he knows the Alpha and Omega knows the beginning and the end. And so honor him in every single thing. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll not only will he bless you in that thing, but you could use you, you could use you to bless others in that thing, right? And so that that's the mindset. It's like, don't think that, you know, just because it's church, that's where God belongs. But then anything else is is not necessarily. He He belongs everywhere. And should be elevated above everything in every place. And so uh, that's an encouragement to anybody working in the quote unquote secular industry, which is I, what I believe God has called me to, at least for this season of my life. Yeah, I mean, he, he belongs there and you just are in tune with the Holy Spirit and allow him to speak to you and how uh, you could be a blessing to others. Absolutely, man. I agree with that 100%. You know, I think God, you know, puts people in, in, in specific situations for a reason. But, you know, in, in terms of, and this is a big thing, you know, as I think I know personally, like your environment uh, is really important, you know? And so for me, for example, you know, I, I've been a Christian for pretty much my whole life. I was saved in, uh, in middle school. And even from, I mean, from middle school, actually I would say from the beginning of high school until about a year ago, I was a total lukewarm Christian. And, you know, when I look back on it now, it's because I realized that I didn't have the right people surrounding me. You know, I thought I could go about it. It was just me and God, you know, which is important. Yeah, it should still be you and God. But then again, God wants us to have fellowship. And so kind of my, my question here is, you know, for people who are in those secular environments, the environments that are not holy, the environments that may even be demonic, how, you know, what advice, what practical advice could you give to people like that who are in those situations that can help them almost maintain perspective or realize, you know, they're there for a reason? Yeah. And, um, and, and it's, a, it's a tough one because unfortunately, as I said, what I just said, there are environments that are more skewed toward, away from God. Uh, the, the previous point that I was making is like, why not if you're a believer, let's bring God to that industry, right? At the same time, you may face some modern day forms of persecution, right? And so like like you're mentioning, I think uh, a very important thing, um, and, and it references back to that, to that verse, seek first the kingdom of God, everything else will be added unto you. So at the very beginning of the day, practical advice that I can give to people is let's, let's seek God, all right? Let's actually seek God. Uh, let's wake up a little earlier than than just waking up and rushing out the door. Let's prepare ourselves for our day, right? And, uh, you know, however much time, you don't have to make a checklist because that's not what I'm trying to get at workspace. I'm just saying, you know, actually, like if the Lord is your everything, take some time to pursue him in the morning. You know, get in prayer if you can, get in the word um, and ask him to speak to you and and, and really guard you and, and and be with you throughout the day. He will be, uh, but affirm that to yourself. And if you can learn some scripture, learn to memorize some scripture and pray that over yourself before you go out into the day. That's powerful. Um, as you pray scripture, it literally is spiritual warfare. And there are certain scriptures that I've memorized and I proclaim before I leave the house or if I'm in my car. Because, I mean, let's be honest, sometimes I'm praying in my car on the way there because I didn't give myself enough time. It happens sometimes, but I'm still praying before I get to work. 
Um, I, I just see it as a necessity, not as something that I need to check off. That's why it's kind of hard to describe if somebody doesn't uh, are not at a point where they're really feeling that yet. It's not something I feel like I need to check off, but it's something that I, I need to seek the Lord so I can you know, properly function throughout the day as a, as a representative of Christ. And so that's a big thing. And, and that's something that I'd say, hey, before you go to your place of work, before you're going to deal with all that stuff, man, put your armor on. Ephesians 6, right? Put on the full armor of God. Take your stand against the enemy schemes because ultimately it's, your battle is not against flesh and blood or your coworkers or your boss or whatever. It's against these principalities and powers and rulers of the air, right? It's against the demonic forces of evil and heavenly realms. And the cool thing is that we don't have our eyes blinded to that as opposed to somebody who isn't fully in Christ yet, hasn't accepted Christ. The reality is uh, they, they can be more prone to fall for certain deceptions. And so if you're around people who don't have that knowledge of Christ yet, they haven't been redeemed, they haven't been saved, ask the Lord to show you exactly uh, you know, what to say and more importantly than what to say, how to live, right? The word says, let us not love with words and speech, but in actions and in truth. So you walk that out, people are going to know something's different about you. And if you choose to deny certain things that they think are okay, but you know are not because the convicting voice of the Holy Spirit is telling you don't do that thing throughout the day or don't listen to that or don't do whatever it may be, they're going to notice that because most people don't deny that because they just do whatever they feel like they should please to do. So uh, and those are a couple of points of advice. But yeah, if you're really in tune with the Lord and there's no special sauce or secret formula to do this, it's just if you know whatever you, you feel like you need to do to seek the Lord. Prayer and reading the word, worship, whatever. Obviously, those are all great things. Do it. Prepare yourself. Arm yourself. Because every day we do go into a battle, and uh, you know you want to be ready. You know, I, you know that's huge, man. I, and just like going back to the whole idea again that I've realized, like again, community is so important. So another practical tip that I would just want to add on to the end of that, you know, like again, like you said, it's important to to be able to guard our heart, guard our minds, guard our, guard our thoughts, because our thoughts turn into our actions and our actions turn into our, our, you know, our habits and our systems, our belief systems. And, you know, it all starts with our thoughts at the end of the day. That's why, you know, God says to capture every thought and make it a slave to him, you know? And, uh, and so kind of practical tip of advice, like I said, from someone who has been, you know, who was grown, grown up in a Christian household and that has been a believer for a long time but has been lukewarm for probably most of that time find find people you know find people that are not you know not only christian but people that are going to keep you accountable and make you actually get better and and challenge you to actually be the version of yourself that relies fully on god and the version of yourself that god has planned you for you to be in this moment and so that's my just another practical tip i want to add on there personally you know because spending time around believers and other people who are you know, chasing after God, pursuing God, you know, on try to get as literally as close as I can. Like Pastor Greg from our, our church said, like he said, like you want to be so close to God that you can feel his breath on your face. In order to feel the breath of God, you need to be extremely close to him, you know. And so I found that f for me personally, having that accountability system is another huge part of it, you know. And so because you, like you said, we can't avoid secular music sometimes. We can't avoid secular environments all the time. And, you know, those things will still be there. Yes, we can, you know, set ourselves up for success, so to speak, you know, but at the end of the day, you're going to be in the battle zone, in the war zone eventually, you know. And so I think it's important to have your group with you, because like it says in, uh, in the Bible as well, that the devil is like a lion and lions hunt by picking off the weakest, you know, picking off the one that's alone, the straggler. You know, he doesn't go after the whole the whole group, the whole herd. He goes after the straggler, the one that's alone. And so I think it's super, super important to remember that as as a community, um, it says this in First Corinthians about when Paul wrote to the Corinthians regarding the church being divided. And that's a big thing with 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 the Corinthian letter is the church can't be divided. We need to stand united because united we are so much stronger than we could ever be. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're meant to be stronger together. I mean, that's why it says you know, sharpen iron, sharpen uh, iron, you know, two, you know, when two or two or three or two or more gather in the name of God, like any promise will, or any prayer will, you know, come to fruition, you know, and there's so many examples of, of, yes, you have to have your intimate relationship with God, but also God created us for fellowship and to actually rise each other up as well. And so that's just another, just a little practical advice on my end that actually leads right into our next point in terms of, you know, setting us up for success and, you know, 
equipping us, you know, the Lord equips us to overcome any temptation and any trial in our lives. But what are some, you know, distractions that you feel might have kept you from truly living in God's presence? You know, before you, you know, or just in general, but also just before you were really understood, you know, your identity, let's say that way. Yeah, certain distractions or, or limitations that keep you from it. So, you know, this is something that uh, I believe was brought up a couple of weeks ago at one of the, the young adult services we were at. And uh, I spoke to I spoke to entertainment as a distraction and you were sitting right next to me and you said, oh, yeah, dude, absolutely. Uh, so that's that's a classic one. And I'd say that's probably one of the main ones for a lot of young people, entertainment, uh, social media. That's why when when the yearly fast comes around at Destiny, at least a lot of people do social media. Um, and so, you know, it's uh, that's something that, that can definitely keep you from fully living in God's presence, especially if you're waking up and you don't have the spiritual discipline yet of, hey, you know, I, I go to prayer first, not because I got to check the box, but because that's what I need. My soul needs it, right? I need to connect with God. You pick up your phone first. I mean, it shows me like, hey, where are your priorities? It makes me question that. You know, I'm never one to say, hey, that's, 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 you know, I'm not your judge. But I'd question like, hey, you know, where, where are your priorities, right? Like ultimately what we talked about already mentioned on this podcast was intent. Intent with everything is huge, right? And that's how you can tell like, you know, uh, some things aren't specifically written out uh, in the Bible, right? Concerning what's good, what's bad. Intent is huge, right? There are certain things that are that are firm for sure. And I'd say, yeah, follow that. There are other things where it's like use discernment and sound judgment. What's, what's the Holy Spirit telling you, right? So entertainment and social media, uh, in my opinion, not a bad thing, right? I think some churches have gone too far to demonize it or maybe uh, allow me to, to say kindly, maybe some some people who don't understand it as much or don't understand that all the intents of it, they say, oh, it's just all these young people on social media and it's no good. I mean, I don't believe that. You know, it can be used. Anything can be used uh, to honor and glorify God with the intent of it being right. Uh, if that thing at, at first is already something that can legitimately be used to honor and glorify God. I mean, there's some things that are just evil and whack and don't even go near them. Social media isn't that thing. I mean, the internet, if you're going to say social media is an evil, uh, then the the internet's an evil as well. I mean, there's a side of the, the web that you just don't want to go on, right? Like we know this, there's a side of the world. And then, then, you know, so, so you can continue to take it a step further, right? And you say, well, if it's all bad, then there's a side of the world that's bad. So what are you going to do? You're not going to live in the world? Well, you have to. So it's all about how you use it. And, um, and, and how, if you're going to consume it, right? I think I was just talking about somebody more from a posting standpoint, a creator, but if you're going to be a consumer of it as well, know yourself. And like you said, get people around you that know yourself and be mindful of not only where you're going on there, but you know how much time you're spending on there. And so I've found though that working more consistently, this is another where I get more practical. When you're working and you're working full time, and then after that, I mean, you may be going to the gym and then after that, like, you just want to go home and relax. Like, you don't have time for social media. You start to not to have time for this stuff as much anymore. Now, and, you know, as I get this new job, I'll probably be on social media a little bit more. But one of the greatest things about working the job that I've had uh, for, you know, the past seven months is that social media has not been a huge part of my life. And I've enjoyed it because I'm working. Like, I don't have time for it, right? And if I do have time, I'll say this. Uh, Because I still have time with my dad. I don't want to make it sound like I do nothing but work. But if I do have time, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to spend time with the Lord. I'm going to spend time with people that I love. I'm going to work out. Uh, I'll probably watch some TV. I mean, I'm not doing everything that's always super productive all the time. I think it's good to have a couple hours of your day where it's just downtime. Like you don't have to think. It's kind of just mindless. Like let me just enjoy some TV before I go to bed or whatever. Or social media, that's fine. But just, you know, check yourself. Have people in your life as well that can get can call you out in love if they think you're going too far with something and you know be conscious i think the main thing too because you're not going to always have people around you at every single hour of the day be conscious and mindful what the holy spirit is telling you and if there's a conviction there there's a conviction a lot different than a condemnation condemnation is from the enemy it's not from god there's conviction where you know hey if i do this that could uh you know hurt my relationship with God. That's, that's from God. That's from God. Listen to that voice. Right. Absolutely, man. That's the, that's a huge thing that I've, I've learned recently too, is it's totally about intent. 
I mean, even if you look at it, like when God created Adam and Eve, he could have totally, or just humans, he could have totally just been like, you know, why did he, why did he even give us the choice to eat from the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil? You know, like, I don't know if anyone's ever even thought about that. I'm sure people have, but like he gave us a choice, you know, and so it's about intent, you know, and, and even if, you know, Adam and Eve didn't necessarily know what would happen, they still went against what God told them to do, you know, and I think it's, a, it's, it's super important. Like you said, intentions are probably the most important thing, in my opinion, when it comes to all of this, because at the end of the day, it depends on, you know, not necessarily because you don't really control what you get out of things. You know, you can't control the results. You can't control, you know, what happens to you, your environment, and that. like all of that's up to God. Like we said, we need to submit our situations and our lives to God and then, you know, let him plan the rest. Like he delighted our feet. And so, but the thing is, is that we need to be willing to take the steps, you know, so we need to take action. It's about intention 100%, and I agree. You are seeking the Lord, and then he will keep you like you said, living according to the truth. And at the end of the day, the truth is what really matters. The truth is the way to live. It's the optimal, optimal way to live, you know? Um, so yeah, man, that's huge. That's really, really big. Do you have any tips for people who may feel like social media, like in terms of com comparison, all these things, when they go to those, those areas for validation, let's say it this way, for someone who's not a believer, okay? For someone who's not necessarily a believer, that's not saved, that's very secular. And they go to these social media platforms and they're dealing with comparison and they're trying to get approval on there and they might be doing the things that may be you know secularly you know uh bringing them popularity or fame or success what would you say for someone like that in terms of you know they are not necessarily you know they're, they're seeking this validation but they're not receiving it and and they're living a life of maybe desperation and anxiety and depression or what's your thoughts on that there's a great quote came to me you may have heard of lecrae before the big big like christian rapper right one of his main quotes is if you live for others acceptance you're going to die from their rejection right and that's something that has always been uh you know resounding to me and so first and foremost if if you are somebody who's dealing with that you know, and you said un unsaved and you're listening to this podcast, first of all, thank you. <laughs> this is a great place to be. And, you know, I, I just tell you, it totally makes sense what you're doing. Uh, if you don't have, or, or I'd say have or know of experienced, uh, but know and believe, I'll say, because there's a difference between knowledge and belief. If you don't know and believe that love that Christ has for you, what he displayed um, by going to the cross, then it makes perfect sense to just chase after every any other thing that could give you validation. Like it doesn't, none of that surprises me at all. Um, and I'd say a lot of things that people who don't have Christ uh, that they do, it just doesn't surprise me. Uh, the fact that the addiction rates are so high with whatever type of addiction you can imagine, social media, uh, you know, you're looking for validation on there. You get in a bunch of relationships because you can't find anything that fulfills you or you want to be with somebody who may not be great for you, but they tell you good things at times. So you stay with them. Once you're in Christ, right? All of these things are, they, you don't need them anymore. Like, and it may take more time for some people to break out of stuff. Um, and it's not to say that Christians don't struggle with some of it as well. Um, but something that, that a Christian can do is fall back on and say, hey, I'm a, I'm a Christian. That means I'm Christ-like. And that means Christ, uh, you know, like I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but he who lives in me. He is the reason why I have this breath in my lungs. And he, he loved me enough to do this for me. And he set me apart for his purposes. Man, I, man, I know who I am in him. It doesn't matter what anybody else is going to say or what anybody else is going to think. Now, here's the deal. That mindset could also lead to kind of a rebel mindset, which I'd advise against. Again, using discernment. I don't, I don't live a, a, where I say, I don't care what anybody thinks because I think that's a dumb statement. Like, of course, I'm going to care about what some people think, but only the people who have allowed access that I care. Right. So let me explain that. Like I have mentors in my life, godly people, uh, you know, let's start with my parents, um, you know, my girlfriend, you know, other godly people in my life. I care what they think and I care when they when they may even give me correction. Right. So that's something. Yeah, I will accept that. And I care about that. 
but there are other people that they may not know me as well, or that, you know, especially if you're an online creator and you get comments sometimes that are like, you know, I just don't care. Like if you, one thing that I've accepted is like, Hey, if you watch that video and you didn't like it, you want to leave a, and you want to leave a comment that you didn't like it, man, I'm in your headspace like that where you even go and leave a comment. Like, thank you for the view and thank you for the engagement. That just helps my numbers. Like, I don't know. Like, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, I mean, if, if and here's the deal: if people are calling you out because it's legitimately bad, then you have to accept that as well, right? You could try to be doing something for the Lord, but you're just not that great at what you're doing yet, and people are going to call you out. That's another thing where it's okay, right? Like it's okay. You're going to learn and get better, but don't let that stuff define you. And if you're online looking for approval, man, you're never going to find it because the one person that likes you, 99 people probably won't. Like it's just crazy. <laughs> You know, so yeah, I mean, being in Christ, I've, I've said at times, I really don't know how people cope with stress and stuff like that if they're not in Christ. But at the same time, I already answered my question. I know how they do it. They just go to anything else that can make them feel good for the moment. Uh, but ultimately, I'm, I, I serve a God that says, um, you, you have peace that surpasses all understanding. And so that tells me, that's in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Well, you know what that tells me? That doesn't matter what my circumstances are. Uh, I know that the Lord is with me, that he's guiding me, leading me and directing me. And that peace is available to me at all times. And so I don't need your approval for that peace. And you can't take my peace because you never gave it to me in the first place. Yeah, man. Dude, that is heavy. <laughs> that is heavy. It's, again, intentions, right? Like what? Like where are you going to seek that validation? Are you, are you trying to seek it from the place that's just going to keep running out? Or are you going to go and seek it from the provider, the person who even created peace, the person that is peace? Same with love. Like, uh, like, how can you even define love and say that you love something without first experiencing the love of Christ? Of Christ? You know, it's just absolutely, man. That's huge. I mean, I agree with you. I didn't even think about it when, when you know before I, when I was asking that question. But oh yeah, I can absolutely see why people are going to that now if they don't have Christ. You know, absolutely. Like, what else are they going to go to? <laughs> you know, absolutely. Yeah, there's there's a void, and the void is either going to get filled with Christ or something else. That's why there is no, you know, there is no person who just doesn't know what they believe because you serve one of two masters, right? You're either serving God or you're serving yourself. And if you're serving yourself, then you're prone to every single scheme of the enemy. And if you don't believe the enemy is real, then tell me why there's all this evil in the world, right? That's the thing. That's the thing. Yeah. Yes, right. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. That's huge. Okay. So last little piece of advice, and this is just for you. You know, if I want to, you know, kind of put the picture in your head, let's say you got a chance to have a conversation. I know you're only 22, so it's only really four years, but if you had to get a conversation like this face to face or just like, you know, whatever video with your 18 year old self and specifically to you and who you know you were, were at that time, what would be like the number one? I'm only, only going to keep it to one thing. So you got to think just one thing that you would give in terms of advice to that 18 year old self that's fresh out of high school, you know, may or may not know what they're going to do next. You know, what would be the one thing that you would uh, advise? The one thing. So let's say I'm recording a video. I'd say, hey, uh, you're getting this on your iPhone 6S. <laughs> you're pulling this up. Uh, you know, you never cracked the screen. So good job. But what I'd say is, uh, the one thing that I tell 18 year old self, especially to somebody like me, who is super motivated is say, Hey, keep working, but you need to be patient. You need to be patient. And I'm sure my 26 year old self will tell the, tell my 22 year old self the same thing. And it will keep going in four year increments until I die. <laughs> Cause I'm, you know, there's motivated people, bro. Like, you know, like you and I, are motivated. We're driven people. We have, you know, passion that the Lord has given us, but be, be patient. Good things come to those who wait. We don't have our ways are not his ways and our thoughts are not his thoughts, right? We don't have that complete mind of God to know how everything is going to work out at every single moment. And, and even though we're working hard, it doesn't mean that right away you're getting that job or right away you're getting that relationship or right, you know, God has ordained things that you will always be able to look back in retrospect because I can look back four years and say, oh, I know why that needed to happen so that this could happen. Oh, that needed to happen so that this could happen. I needed to meet this person so that this could happen. You know, I needed to meet this person so that this could happen not only in my, in my life, but in their life. You know what I mean? So it's like the Lord knows, like he knows every single thing that he's doing. And if you submit uh, your life to him, 
he is the, the most trusted source that you could ever submit your life to. Um, there's nothing else, no one else that will never, never fail you. God will never fail you. Though it may seem at times like, man, I'm living lean and mean, or, or this is whatever the case is, whatever type of hardship that you're facing, the Lord is never going to abandon you, never leave you, nor forsake you. It's a promise in scripture. And he's the one that you can lean on. And you know, ultimately that, hey, it will work out. Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together for the good uh, of those who love God and are called according to his purposes. Now, a lot of people have, have used that verse and just say all things work out for the good and they end it there. Well, it doesn't end there. Work out for the good of those who love God, right? Do you really love God and are called according to his purposes? I know from a very young age, got saved at the age of seven. And, you know, I believe even it was it, my mom shares a story. It was spoken over when I was still in her womb. It was prophesied that I was going to be somebody who leads my generation to Christ. Okay, so I don't know what type of uh, you know audience that is, what numbers, whatever. I don't know what that that exactly looks like, but I know that the Lord is going to use me for that purpose because that was not only confirmed then, but it was confirmed through multiple trusted people throughout my life and people who I know that the Lord speaks to those people and they spoke it to me. So, so I know that, right? I'm not going to go around like boasting that to people, but that's something I'm always keeping within myself, and the reason I share it now too is because. I'm saying that to myself to say, hey, God is going to do great things with your life. And and anybody who's listening to this, that's the case as well. God's going to use you, even if you don't know how everything's going to work out and the timing of it, continue to be patient and just focus on what he's given you in that season right now. Steward that thing. If you're in school, man, focus and get that done so that when you can move on from that, you're not 10 years of school paying off debt like crazy, you know. Focus and get that done so that whatever that next step is in your life, nothing's ever going to slow down God's plan for you, but you could, you know, by your actions, uh, slow down the will of God for your life. I mean, I believe that's a real thing. You could be off doing your own thing and away from God. And he said, well, I wanted to use you in that, but I got to wait till you come back because these are the things that you can only do when you're honoring and serving me. That's, that's a thing as well. And, you know, as you face temptations and as you face whatever it is, remember that like, Hey, God has called me. Uh, he's commissioned me. I don't, even if you don't know what the specific thing is, I know that I'm here in this life to serve him. I'm continuing to follow after him and I'm patient and he'll bring that to me. Patient doesn't look like sitting around. Patient looks like stewarding exactly what God has given you for this moment. And I want to commend you to Andre because he, God has given you uh, this vision and, for this podcast and what you did, you say, hey, I'm not just going to think about the vision. I'm going to steward that vision. He's called me at this very specific time of my life. Though you don't even know what your entire career is going to look like, whatever the job may be, you said, hey, this time of my life, he's called me to share his word and encourage others, disciple and steward others through his through this podcast. So I'm going to do it. And you're doing it, right? Sometimes it's just as simple as that, right? Let me say too, another point to knowledge and belief. This is why... I kind of sit back and I marvel at the, at the hardcore atheist, right? Who just hard out denies no, no God outside of the Bible. Uh, I mean, it, a, a reference, a verse from scripture, but this proves that even outside of the Bible in Romans one, it says his works, the evidence of God is known throughout creation, right? You can look at creation and say something had divine had to put this in place. There are too many things that are so specific to where you'd say, hey, this could not have happened by random chance over random chance. I mean, bro, we know March Madness, right? What are the chances of winning that bracket? It's like insane. Well, think about that like to the nth degree, right? Of chance for everything to have occurred the way it has, to be made the way it has, DNA strands, all of that stuff, right? The, the, the chance, the random chance of that just happening from a bang or whatever is insane. Like literally, I don't know why, I don't know why that's accepted as like an acceptable theory of science. Like it, it, to me, that doesn't make sense. Side note, I was going to say the difference between knowledge and belief, the enemy knows there's a God. That's the point I was making to the to atheists. Like if you flat out deny there's a God, like the enemy even knows there's a God. He knows. He just doesn't believe. He just doesn't believe that 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 he, the god will take him out someday right but he knows like so even if he knows have that be an example of the difference between knowledge and belief don't just be you know on the same level as even your enemy and knowing that hey yeah there's a god like make a choice in what you want to do either flat out reject him or choose to serve him because 
uh, ultimately we don't know how much time is left, right? And so uh, that's that's maybe comes off a little more harsh, but I mean that's something at the end of the day that has to be considered as well. Thank you for the opportunity, and I'm looking forward to uh, continue to listen in as well. Not only be a guest, but also a listener and see who else you have coming on here. So, and that brings us to the end of this episode. Thanks to Josh Carson for joining us during that valuable discussion of his experience in sports broadcasting, his faith, and intentional living. We hope the discussion of using your passions and career to serve God by living intentionally was beneficial to you. Thanks for listening to the Conquering Chaos Through Christ podcast. And you should definitely check out Josh's YouTube channel, JC3, and check out his content and subscribe to him there. A special thank you to Rickland Music as well for allowing me to use our new official song for the intro and outro of these videos and podcast episodes. If you enjoy our show, please rate and review it on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And be sure to come back next week for more practical ways to grow as a Christian. Until then, this is Andre Reynica. And don't forget to use the power of Jesus Christ that is in you to conquer the chaos within your life. How easy it is to forget that there is a power in light district inside of you, inside of me. Waiting for us now just to believe that we are sons and daughters, that we are more than poppers. Free from the voices of the scoffer, therefore the time has come. We stand as champions.